Well, it's tax time, so here's something you should know. Hi, this is Greg Powers with Keller Williams Metropolitan, and this is Real Estate Smarts in Under Three Minutes. I was on the phone the other day with a homeowner uh, trying to explain why this would be a great time for she and her husband to get their house back on the market. And she said to me, well, sure, we could sell it for a great price, but we would just end up paying a bunch of capital gains tax. So why would we bother? And I had to pull out my fire extinguisher and give her a quick blast. Figuratively speaking, of course. Now I have to put my disclaimer hat on before I tell you this. But generally speaking, when you sell your primary residence, the IRS will allow you to exclude up to $250,000 in gain and up to $500,000 if you're filing a joint return. So in this woman's case, uh, I saw in the assessor's record that they had paid $300,000 for the property. So they would have to sell it for $800,000 to hit that $500,000 in gain threshold. So I reassured her that they probably would not owe any kinds of tax on the sale of their house. But I told her, now that first asterisk was because this typically applies only to your primary residence. And the IRS defines that in terms of ownership and residence at the property. But usually it means if you've owned the property for two out of the last five years, it qualifies. The second asterisks were because this only applies to the gain on your property. So if you're filing jointly and you sell your house for $550,000, that's not the same thing. Like I mentioned in the example, these people paid $300,000. They would have to sell it for $800,000 to realize a gain of $500,000. Now, the IRS also allows certain improvements to be counted uh, toward the basis, um, basically what you paid for the house. So if you added a septic system, if you modernized the kitchen, uh, let's say you paid 300000 for the house, you spent 15000 on a new septic system, now your basis is 315000 So you'd have to sell for 815000 to realize that gain. Now, as with anything relating to the IRS, of course, there are exceptions, there are rules, there are calculations, complications. Publication 523 from the IRS, which deals with the sale of your home, is 22 pages long. So obviously, there's more to it than I can convey in a three-minute video. So if you have any questions about the taxation on the sale of your home, don't ask me. Talk to a tax professional. But if you have any real estate related questions, you can ask me. I'm a realtor. So thanks for watching and hope you have good luck with your tax return. And hey, if you enjoy these videos or if you'd like to sign up for my occasional newsletter, just head over to my uh, blog on my website, gregpowershomes.com forward slash blog, and you can sign up there. Thanks so much. Bye.